Welcome to Agron Infotech. In this video you will learn how to carry out two sample T test in our studio. The video will include Brief description of two sample T test Visualizing the data set Performing two sample T test in our studio If a data set is obtained from two samples and population variance is not known For such two sample means, the T test is more often used t-test is usually applied for a sample size lower than 30. Let's see the example data set. A researcher grows maize plants in two separate fields. As the plants are ready to be harvested, he is interested to see the difference in cob length. He takes a random sample of six plants from both fields. He measured the cob length. The object X1 shows the cob length of cobs measured from field 1. The object X2 shows the cob length recorded from second field. First formulate the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference in mean cob length of both fields. Or, the difference in the mean cob length of both the fields is equal to zero. The alternate hypothesis is opposite to the null hypothesis. It means the difference in the mean cob length of both fields is not equal to zero. Let's test this hypothesis at 5% confidence level. Create the data frame using data.frame function. In field argument enter group variable names. Set the value for each argument to 6 which represent the sample size. For cob length provide the x1 and x2 objects as created earlier. Print function will show the data set. Use structure function to see the variable structure. To access components of data matrix use attach function. Use summary function to produce summary statistics of the data object. You can also get the summary statistics for each field. In summary function specify field 1 and field 2 for cob length summary statistics. It's good practice to visualize data set before applying test statistics. Use query of graphical parameters to set S4 type of plot argument. This will change the shape of the plot in a square. Use attach function to access the components of data set. In box plot function write cob length is separated by field. This will produce box plot for both fields against the cob length. In a box plot we can get the information of distributional characteristics. Upper and lower whisker represents the scores outside the middle 50%. Upper and lower quartiles. 75% of the scores fall below the upper quartile. 25% of the scores fall below the lower quartile. The middle box represents the middle 50% of the score. This range of scores from lower to upper quartile is referred to as interquartile range. The median or middle quartile represent the midpoint of the data. You can add color, main title, X, and Y labels to the box plot. For this, use color, main, X and Y lab argument. Before proceeding for test statistics, first determine the homogeneity of variances across groups or in this case field. To use Levine test load the companion to applied research package using require function. In Levine test function Y argument specify the response variable or cob length in this case. The group argument represents the group or categorical variable. The probability value shows there is no significant difference in variances of first and second field. It means variances are homogeneous. You can also use ftest to determine homogeneity in variances. In variance.test function write cob length separated by group variable or field. In this test you can get f-statistic probability value and 95% confidence. Again the results show that the variances are homogeneous. Now let's proceed for the computation of test statistic for two-sided hypothesis. Use t.test function to compute this value. Write response variable separated by the group variable. Write two-sided for alternative hypothesis. Set the value of mu to zero. For paired argument write false as the groups are independent. Use true for variance equality as we already noticed the variances are homogeneous. Set the confidence level at 95%. The results show that the t-value is negative 2.88.
probability value is lower than 0.05. This indicates rejection of the null hypothesis. It also means that the true difference between the average Cobb lengths of both fields is not equal to zero. It indicates the acceptance of alternate hypothesis. The confidence interval gives a range of negative 5.26 to negative 0.67. Significantly higher Cobb length was recorded in second field as compared to the first field. Now let's suppose if you have to test one-sided hypothesis. In this example we suppose the average Cobb length in first field is lower than in second field. Or, this also means the difference in average Cobb length of both fields is less than zero. Then alternate hypothesis will be, the difference in mean Cobb length of both fields is greater than zero. Now we shall test this hypothesis at 95% confidence interval. Use the same function. In alternative argument write greater to specify the alternate hypothesis. The t-test value remains the same. Probability value is higher than 0.05. This indicates the rejection of the null hypothesis. In other words you can say that the true difference in mean Cobb length of both fields is not lower than zero. It means we shall accept the alternate hypothesis. This also means that the true difference in average Cobb length is greater than zero. Now let's suppose the Cobb length in first field is higher than in second field. This means the null hypothesis indicates the difference between two sample means is greater than zero. The alternate hypothesis is opposite to the null hypothesis. Now let's test this hypothesis at 95% confidence level. Again using the same function just write less in alternate argument. The results indicate that t-value remains the same. Probability value is lower than 0.05. It shows the significance of the null hypothesis. Or in other words we say the null hypothesis is accepted. This indicates that the true difference between the mean Cobb length of both fields is greater than zero. So we shall reject the alternate hypothesis which shows the true difference between sample means is lower than zero. I hope this video will help you to understand how to carry out two sample t-test using our program. Please comment below if you have any questions.